All righty, we are going to call to order the regular meeting of the Oviedo City Council. It is Monday, July 18th. It is approximately 6.50 p.m. At this time, if we can all rise, Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Officer Rosarius, why don't you come on up here and lead us in the pledge, sir? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Chief White. How are you, Chief? Very good, Mayor. Good evening, Council. If you'd like to join me in prayer, please do so at this time. Father God, we, we come to you tonight in, in prayer for our nation. We pray for those families and those fellow employees of our fallen law enforcement officers. Lord, we pray that you would instill healing and comfort and, and protect them in everything that they do to protect us. Lord, be with all of our city employees, all of our elected leaders. Lord, continue to grant many blessings on this wonderful town. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chief. I'd like to call our meeting to order now. Our first order of business ceremonial item and its new officer introductions. Chief Chud now, why don't you come on up and do the honors? I kind of ru ruined your surprise a little there. I'm sorry. That's quite all right, Mayor. It's good for him to get up here and lead us in the pledge. Uh, as we do with all our new officers, we bring them before the council, so not only the council can know them, but, but they can meet the council and introduce them to the rest of the city. So at this time, I'd like to call up Officer Jason Rosarez, who uh, just joined us uh, just joined us a few weeks ago, and I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell everybody a little bit about himself. Just give it a second, it'll turn. There you go. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Officer Jason Rosarius. Um, I am extremely proud to introduce myself in front of you guys. Um, as you know, a lot of you guys know, I grew up here. Um, can't be more thankful to be able to represent my own city, uh, my own hometown. Every single night I go out with my FTO, I'm learning new things. And I'm honestly feeling that, that I'm actually serving in my own community. Whenever I see everything I'm, I'm, I'm used to and grew up with. Um, I just want to say, especially to Chief Chun now, thank you so much for the opportunity, and I couldn't be more proud to serve the city of Oviedo. Welcome, Jason. Thank you. Keep yourself yeah. safe out there. Look at your parents beaming yeah. back there. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jason, it's kind of uh, strange for me looking at you in a uniform, considering how long I've known you and you were just, you know, about that big so congratulations Ms. man oh I'm sorry Ms. councilwoman has something yeah, to say I've got something to say uh, Jason uh, thank you um, for choosing this profession as your career law enforcement is very very important as you know uh, my husband was in law enforcement for over 40 years and in light of what's been happening to police officers all over our country I'm sure your family is a little nervous a little apprehensive so we really want you to be careful and be safe out there and know that most people are behind our police officers. Most people understand that our police officers are there to protect us. You know, there was a shooting in um, Dallas, I believe it was, and they interviewed a woman. And she said, and this really speaks to police officers and what they do. She said when ever, the shooting started, everyone was running away. Everybody was scattering. Everybody was hiding except the police officers. The police officers go to the trouble, go to the shooter so that they can apprehend him to save more lives. And they do that all the time. And I just think it's a tragedy what's going on right now. So you have our 100% support. Be careful out there because we don't want your parents to worry, um, which they will anyway, no matter what we say. Um, so good luck to you and welcome to Oviedo. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Give this man a. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Councilman Hankin. Um, you know, I'm glad Councilwoman brought that up, but I, I just wanted to add as well. You know, Jason, welcome. It's great to have a hometown kid here, but you know, 
for all our officers, and Councilwoman started to touch on it, and I talked to the Chief a little bit about this last week. You know, I want you and everybody to know, all five of us in this staff, what goes on in this country with police officers, that doesn't happen in Oviedo. And for our current chief, our past chief, and the chiefs before that have made a bond with our community that we don't have this tension. Everybody in Oviedo gets along, but, you know, I always worry about you guys when you're making that long walk to the side of a car in the dark of night. We're with you always. So you guys have our full support, and I'm, I'm very glad Councilwoman brought that up. So go out there. You have a safe career. We'll always be there for you, Chief. Thank you for all you do. Your men and women are awesome, and, uh, you know, we're not going to have what's going on out there here. So thankfully we're all here in Oviedo, and it's good. So good luck. Be safe. Glad you're here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Give them a round of applause, mm -hmm. everyone. Now he has to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's all dressed up for work. All righty. Moving on, we're on to cer ceremonial item number two, and this is the donation to the American Cancer Society 7th Annual Relay for Life Golf Outing and Appreciation Presentation to Republic Services. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Drew Bowler, our Parks and Rec Director. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, tonight is always a fun night for me and to uh, bring about uh, not only uh, several partners that we do the event with, but also to uh, show what we were able to once again bring uh, in to donate to the Relay for Life American Cancer Society. Uh, to date, uh, this is our seventh annual outing, and uh, to date, going into the, this year, we had raised over 100, well, raised exactly $117,521 and donated to the uh, American Cancer Society over the last six years. And that's just through everything that's through, that you do here in City Hall. The yep. cheese steaks, the cheese golf, steaks, out, the golf day, outings, the jean day, jean staff, day. J staff donates to wear jeans on Fridays throughout the year, uh, our Philly uh, chicken sandwich days. Uh, we've done uh, a couple things with Jersey Mike's this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, the golf outing. So at this time, uh, I'd like to first start off with uh, bringing uh, Brian Thornton, who's the general manager with Republic Services. Once again, they were our top sponsor uh, at $6,000 and uh, for six year running. And I'd like to bring uh, Brian up to uh, uh, give him a little token of our appreciation. I'd like council to come down to do that for us. Thank you, Drew. All righty. You know, Republic Services does so much more for our community than everybody realizes other than faithfully picking up your garbage uh, each week. They uh, contribute and give back to the Parks and Rec, to different organizations in our city. Whenever they're asked, they always step up. They always contribute to this event. So. Bryant, uh, the City of Oviedo and the American Cancer Society would like to recognize our title sponsor, Republic Services, for your continued support of the Relay for Life golf outing in 2016. Sir, thank you so much for everything. <laughs> On behalf of Republic Services, we certainly value the partnership we have with the City of Oviedo. We value you as residents. Uh, I'm honored to be up here. Um, as a part of the community. Um, I, I, I love the city of Oviedo. I actually live in Orlando, but uh, I value this community and value what we do. That's right. And hey, I, I can change uh, you know, residence <laughs> pretty quick, but uh, certainly appreciate it uh, in council, in the honorable mayor, uh, and staff. We certainly appreciate the uh, opportunity to be able to support this, this very important uh, event in uh, our community here. So thank you. Thank you, residents. We appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> and Brian, why don't you stay up here and uh, help Mr. Bowware uh, with the imaginary check. He usually has the real check, but let me turn it over to him first. Don't go anywhere. We want you to help us unveil that. 
I'd like to go ahead and have Tab Bartlett, which is our uh, local sponsor, or actually he's our con coordinator for Relay for Life, come up, as well as Kelly Wild. She's our event manager, uh, excuse me, the event coordinator for this past year's Relay for Life event. And uh, Chris Anderson wasn't able to make it. Okay. So uh, I do have a real check. I'll, I'll take that again <laughs> later. But uh, uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Tab to just say a few words before we do the unveiling. And I'll have uh, Brian do the unveiling. Okay. Uh, hopefully, it'll, you're, it'll, the check will make you happy. Here we go. Tab. Well, thank you, Drew. Again, Council, Brian, everyone here in attendance, I truly appreciate another opportunity. Uh, this is my fifth season with uh, the American Cancer Society, um, and I'm not an Oviedo born and raised, but I am an Orlando born and raised, uh, so I am very familiar with this town. I've been fishing here all my life. Uh, very, I have friends and family all that live here. So it's such an honor for me as the representative from the American Cancer Society to come here uh, and just have this ongoing relationship with the city and their partners. Um, because it's truly uh, such a wonderful thing that we're able to do. And when you think about that number, um, you know, and you look at what's on that wall and all that's been accomplished, I mean, all of this was done without the city funding. I mean, this is, this is what people do to go above and beyond. They stretch the dollar, they make it work, and then they still go out and do more. So truly hats off to everyone, each and every one that donated through the cheesesteaks, through the Blue Jeans Days and things like that. And that money goes to help so many people right here locally. And yes, we are the largest non-government funded, you know, cancer research company, nonprofit in the world. Um, and, and I'm not going to even apologize for that because we absolutely are saving lives through medications and things that we support. But the lodging, the rides to and from treatment, the wigs, the makeup, all of the things that people get free of charge every day right here in Winter Park which is our local office, and it, ser it serves so many of the surrounding counties. Uh, we have our Hope Lodges in Tampa, Gainesville, and we have a new one coming to Jacksonville. These are free places for people to stay that are undergoing treatment, and it's just a phenomenal thing. So this money goes to help people in your neighborhood as well. So, again, thank you on behalf of myself and Kelly, who is our event chair, volunteer. She leads a team of about 16 people to coordinate this event. And to date, we have raised, not counting the, the mystery check, uh, we have raised $73,205.55 for this year. So, Right, come on over. And you uh, just uh, do it real easy. We'll just uh, do this. Total of twenty one thousand dollars. We actually, we actually uh, went up a little bit from last year. Last year we uh, cut a check to you for eighteen thousand. I don't have my glasses on, so seven hundred seven hundred eighty four dollars. And uh, we were happy to we were able to raise a little bit more this year for the American Cancer Society. It's a it's a heartwarming uh, ability for us to be able to do this. So. Great job. Mr. Mayor, I would like to present this to you as well um, from the American Cancer Society for the continued support and dedication to us as an organization uh, to be your charity of choice. Uh, and we truly, truly, truly appreciate it. I, I accept this from the entire city staff for doing all the work. Uh, we just go out and play dead golf. <laughs>
So, so to date now, we will, uh, it, it is now grown to 138,521 in the last seven years. <laughs> events go. It is one of the best golf events A run and most fun that there is. Mm -hmm. So next year join in if you haven't before. Alrighty. Let's see where we're up to. <coughs> Moving along, we're up to item number three which is the approval of the minutes for the June 20, 2016 regular session and the June 27, 2016 work session. I'd like to entertain a motion to do so. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? On the right? No? On the left? Good. All righty. All in favor of the motion to adopt the minutes for both meetings, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, we're up to our public comment portion of the meeting. I have no written request this evening. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address council on any item that does not have public comment or is on our consent agenda? Seeing none. I'm going to close public comment and move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda tonight is lengthy. It is item number 5 through 22. What is the pleasure of council? Mr. Mayor. Councilman Hank. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda as it's presented. A second. A motion second. Councilman, anything? Nope. Looks good. Councilman Britton? Good. Councilwoman Drago? Good. Deputy Mayor? I'm fine, sir. All righty. Hearing no discussion, I will call the question. Uh, the motion on the table is to adopt the consent agenda, item number 5 through 22. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, we have uh, no public hearings. Uh, we have no first readings, but we do have a few resolutions. Just give me a moment here to catch up. Let's see, first one is number 25. All righty, our first resolution is number 3216-16. It is Site Development Order number 441-115. It's an amendment to the preliminary subdivision plan for the Hammock Park subdivision. Uh, Mr. Cobb, can you give us an introduction, please? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Uh, one thing before I begin, I'd like to let you know that on your dais tonight, there is a copy of an amended site development order uh, we found a glitch in the computer system where uh, what was received, uploaded into the SIRE system wasn't this. And this is what the resolution actually approved. So we wanted to make sure that you had it on the dais when you were considering this. Uh, Linda, if you could pull up the graphic for us. Um, this is a request for the council to approve an amendment to the approved preliminary subdivision plan for the Hammock Park subdivision. Uh, the City Council approved the uh, preliminary subdivision plan of June 1st of 2015 with the adoption of resolution number 2981-15. Uh, it approved the site development order number 441-15. Uh, the Hammock Park sub preliminary subdivision plan relates to 23 single family lot residential development. Uh, in the approved plans, the lot sizes vary from 9,600 square feet to 18,886 square feet. The minimum lot width is 80 feet, and with some lots reaching a width of 115 feet. 
The applicant has requested, if you look up on the board, the app, I tried to bring this into a nutshell. The applicant requests uh, three different things. Uh, on lots 9 and 13, the applicant is requesting a five-foot deviation to allow a the principal structure to be located 15 feet from the west property line. And that is the west property line only. That's on lots 9 and 13, which are in the graphic are to the extreme left. On lots 6 and 10, which are over on the east side, the applicant is asking for a five-foot deviation along the east property line. And... Uh, to allow the principal structure to be located 15 feet uh, from the from the property line, my my assumption is is that in all four of these lots they are what we call double frontages, and the uh, east frontage on lot six and ten, the west frontage on lots nine and thirteen, I assume are going to be the side lot lines, and that the houses will face north and south respectively. So the request for the deviation. The other request by the applicant is that in the initial approval of the um, subdivision plan, the model homes were designated as lots four and five, which you'll see in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, the applicant is now requesting that lots one and two be designated as the model home center sales office. Uh, the staff has reviewed the uh, amendments to the preliminary subdivision plan. It is recommended that City Council adopt resolution number 3216-16. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Is the applicant present? Good evening. <clears throat> David Evans, Evans Engineering, 719 Irma Avenue, Orlando, 32803, here on behalf of Meritage Homes. We have read staff's recommendation and obviously uh, agree with their um, synopsis and report as well as LPA's recommendation. I'm here to answer any questions. <coughs> any questions from Mr. Evans while he's here? No? Sure. We're good right now. I have no uh, public comment forums. Is there anybody in the audience, though, who would like to address council on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to adopt resolution number 3216 16. Second. We have a motion by Deputy Mayor Shank and a second by Councilwoman Drago. Deputy Mayor Shank, you have the floor. Uh, it just seems like a little bit of cleanup, so. Right. Councilwoman? I'm good. Councilman Britton? Just a, just a brief statement. I'm not going to vote against this, but, uh, you know, we, we've had some deviations come through recently that uh, we haven't approved or sent back to the drawing board. Um, what I see in this one that's different is that this is internal to the neighborhood. So whoever wants to come and live in this neighborhood is going to come in with their eyes wide open and they'll see these uh, these slots as they, they they will exist so that's the reason I'm going for this and not really uh, uh, considering uh, voting against it okay councilman Hankin no sir looks fine um, I do have a couple of questions and mr. Evans maybe if you can come on up and answer them for me first question is when this whole area was pre-planned, and it was actually pre-planned years ago by Meritage when they did Hammock Park or whatever they call the one to the north. Shangri-La, this neighborhood, it was all supposed to connect. Are they connecting this? There is a existing PSP in the city now that includes a extension of the northern property into the eastern side of this, this property as a request by staff and through the design planning process of Shangri-La Lane and this particular piece of property, the road was stubbed to the north for a, a eventual connection. Um, the the right-of-ways don't line up. Right, so yeah, I know you've got the Shangri-La is here and the other one's there. Yeah, it's available. Uh, the right-of-way's there. Uh, it would have to be dedicated from the end of our piece and that stub of the road to the existing wiggle in the road in order to connect up to the north. but. Uh, the proposal is not on the table at this time, but that property owner certainly has the right to do that. Mm -hmm. All righty. The, the other issue um, is we have been getting many complaints from the homeowners in the area. Uh, I know there were emails flying around again this morning. Uh, occasionally we've been getting them on work being done outside of the allowable hours, uh, things of that nature. Are, are these all being addressed? Absolutely. Um, I've been haven't been privy to all the emails. I've seen a few of them, 
and I know that Meritage is very responsive immediately uh, in this case relative to any of, the, of those uh, comments. But I'll pass that along to them and make sure that they're aware. Is there of anyone here from Meritage? No, they're not here tonight. Couldn't make it. Yeah. See, that makes it hard for me. But I'll, I'll, uh, I'll certainly speak to them directly. <clears throat> makes it hard for me to vote for this if they're not even here to answer the, the issues that we've been having. But uh, all righty, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Cobb? Yes, sir. Did your investigation turn up anything today on the email complaints we were getting on uh, the work hours and such up at Meritage? Is there anything that the, the city is failing to do to address these issues? Uh, and I realize a lot of them are noise related and nobody likes construction. Right. I get that. Actually, Mr. Wyatt has, has uh, looked into the matter today, and um, I'd like to have him come up and okay. update Thank council. You. Uh, I spoke with our inspector. He's been on site every day. He spoke to the work hour question I asked him. Mm -hmm. He said that on Saturday when it was stated that they were working early, they were not. He told me it was after 8 o'clock. And the pump issue, he told me there's no longer any pumps on site. Okay. Well, and I have not directly heard. You know, this is the first I've heard of any of it. So it hasn't made it to my level. And as far as I know, it's been taken care of. All right. Well, then problem solved. Thank you, Bobby. Can you just make sure that uh, Walt is cognizant of it? And, you know, as we have more and more infill development as the city infills, I mean, obviously having construction next door to you, nobody likes that. So we have to minimize the impact and just make sure the codes are being followed. I mean, that's, that's all we can do, of course. Absolutely, sir. Thank you, Bobby. Any other questions from council? No? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. All in favor of adopting uh, Resolution 3216-16, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, next item on our agenda is item <coughs> number 20. Hey, David, just relate a meritage that, you know, please, we don't want to get any more of these emails. Thank you. Just catching up. All righty. Uh, resolution number 3226-16, Site Development Order 464-16 is the Dwell at Oviedo Preliminary <coughs> Subdivision Plan. Mr. Cobb, can you enlighten us on this, please? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is a request for City Council to approve Site Development Order number 464-16. Uh, this site development order accomplishes multiple uh, items. At first, it is the preliminary subdivision plan for the Dwell subdivision. It is also the uh, preliminary development plan for lots three and four of the subdivision. The total land area is approximately 25.26 acres. The subject property is located on the north side of Oviedo Ball Mall Boulevard and west side of West Broadway Street, State Route 426. Well, Linda, if you could pull up the, the graphic on that one as well, and uh, if, if possible, zoom in. Um, the property's future land use designation is mixed use and its zoning district is plan unit development. Uh, the PUD is governed by a non-statutory development agreement that was approved by ordinance number 1591 on October 6, 2014. The dwell, the preliminary subdivision plan and lots three and four were reviewed per the non-statutory development agreement as well as the land development code and the comprehensive plan. The staff has concluded that the uh, then the preliminary plan as well as the preliminary subdivision plan do comply with all the with through its review. The applicant plans to subdivide the property into six parcels, uh, creating two public rights away, a continuation of Oviedo Medical, Medical Drive to the north of Oviedo Mall Boulevard, as well as a widening of Sugar Mill Road perpendicular to West Broadway Street. Uh, both right of ways will be 60 feet wide. The development will have full and main access on Oviedo Boule Mall Boulevard and a secondary access on State Route 426. Um, the applicant proposes in fa on lots three and four to construct 296 multifamily dwelling units. Uh, if you remember from the uh, master plan, uh, the lots to the west, uh, I believe it's parcels two and three, are going to be where office was planned, and then there's also a hotel lot planned down on the north side of Mall Boulevard. Uh, there are two deviations requested from the Land Development Code. Uh, each deal with landscape islands within, within parking lots. The deviations are requested to accommodate the landscape islands 
with uh, small trees adjacent to proposed garages and also provide sidewalks within some of the parking islands to improve the safety of pedestrians. Um, despite not being subject to the zoning in progress, uh, due to its early submittal, the subject site design complies with many of the proposed standards in the zoning in progress. Uh, the architectural designs will be submitted for review at the time of final engineering uh, per the non-statutory development agreement. The local planning agency considered resolution number 3226-16 at its Tuesday, June 28, 2016 meeting and there it recommended approval. Um, the act, the L LPA also requested some language be added to the plans. Those la that language has been added. It's recommended that city council adopt resolution number 3226-16. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Applicant is present. Do you have a presentation for us? Chad Moorhead of Madden Moorhead and Stokes, 431 East Ratio Avenue. No presentation for you tonight. Uh, Mr. Cobb did a good job explaining the project. We're okay. here to answer any questions. Great. Do you have any? Council, have any questions while Mr. Moorhead's mm, here? No. Originally, the, the plan was a mix of uh, three-story buildings and a four-story tower. Is that still the plan? It is now four four-story buildings. So oh, okay. Reduced it by one. So it's four four-story buildings. Yes. How many three stories? None. None. Much better choice having elevators in those buildings. I wish others would have made that decision. Good choice. Yeah, I think you'll do well. That's uh, something that's needed out here for uh, elders. You know, to be able to go up and down inside hallways and things like that. I think you'll do good. All right. Thank you. I have no public comment forms. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to address us on the dwell? I know it's redundant that I ask since I know what each of you are here for, but we do have to do that. Seeing none, we will close the public comment meeting and we will move on to the pleasure of council. So I'm going to make a motion to adopt resolution 3226-16. Second. Motion by Deputy Mayor and seconded by Councilman Britton. Deputy Mayor, you have the floor. I just ask, I know that the, um, I can ask the applicant. Um, I know it's, you're not subject to the, um, the new rules, uh, and it looks good, but I'm just, we're going to keep it looking that good and, and possibly uh, strive for as much of those uh, uh, look that we're looking for in terms of the new rules uh, that we can get uh, when you come forward. Okay. I mean, that's I, that's I'm going to be looking for when you come forward with the pic, with the place that I I like what I'm seeing so far in the images. Uh, they look good, but I, I just I think you guys have seen what we've been looking for uh, over the past year. Um, I want to make sure that they continue to look that good. Sure. Please, that's what I'm asking you. Four-story marble towers are nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Clay Chandler. I'm with the client company. I'm the developer. Right. right. Um, yeah, the uh, um, architecture is not done yet. Right. So you're catching us a time when we have the ability to look at your architectural standards and, and try to apply them as, as best we can. Wonderful. Um, the buildings are, if you've seen our project down in the Lake Nona area. Oh, yeah. Um, the footprints are natural four-story building out there, so the idea is that it would be a very similar project. Great. Wonderful. Are you, are you surface parking everything or a garage? Surface parking. Surface parking. We do have garages, but they're all in uh, all along the perimeter of the property. Oh, garages to rent, not, not uh, yeah. parking. Garage. Not parking garages, mm -hmm. stack parking garages. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anything else, Council? No. Like Deputy Mayor? Nope. Councilman Britton? Um, this has been kicking around for a couple of years now, I think. Uh, Seems like a really good good project. Uh, I like the fact that there's a hotel included. Could you tell us anything about that? The uh, we are currently working with brokers. We're trying to market it. We're also marketing two pro marketing the two properties to the, on the, the two lots on the west side for offices. We're getting some serious interest in the office. No real interest in the hotel yet, but we're optimistic. We think it's a good site, especially with the hospital building across the street. Mm -hmm. We might be a little bit before our time on the hospital or on the on the hotel, but we think ultimately it will be successful. Okay. Yeah, I think it'll be a great anchor for the hospital and, and an amenity for the mall. So, good luck. Thank you. 
Councilman Hankin, anything? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just a product that we don't have, you know, that you, you mentioned it, Mr. Mayor, you know, elevators, people getting elderly now and get in, get up to their apartment. They don't want to take care of the lawn anymore. So I think it's, uh, it's something we don't have that we need. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Thank you so much. Councilwoman, anything? I think everyone said a lot, said everything already. Good luck. I know you'll build something beautiful, as Councilman uh, Delso, I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor had said, about the architectural standards. So we're looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Clay. Any other questions from Council? Anything, Mr. Cobb, to add? Uh, no, Mayor. Motion on the table is to adopt resolution 3226-16. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You in town long, Clay, or are you heading back? Uh, here are. Back to Philly. All righty, next up is resolution number 3228-16, amended and restated non-statutory development agreement and associated preliminary subdivision plan for Central Park townhomes. Mr. Cobb, please enlighten us. Thank you, Mayor. This is a request for council to approve an amended and restated non-statutory development agreement and a preliminary subdivision plan for the Central Park townhomes. Property is approximately seven acres. It's located on the west side of Central Avenue, approximately 2,400 feet north of Mitchell Hammock Road. It is designated downtown mixed use on the uh, comprehensive plan future land use map. It has two zoning districts. Uh, it has mixed use district Central Avenue on the uh, east side of the property and then it also has mixed use district multifamily on the west side of the property. On January 7, 2008, the council adopted resolution number 1757-08 approving a mixed-use development for the property. Uh, it included uh, two commercial buildings as well as 58 townhome units. Uh, the City Council has also grant granted uh, various uh, extensions to the non-statutory development agreement uh, since its original approval. Uh, the amended and restated development agreement, the purpose of it is basically to uh, substitute or remove the commercial uses from the project and uh, just have it as a standard townhome project. Uh, the, it would increase the number of townhomes from the originally approved 58 to uh, the proposed 68 townhomes. Uh, the development agreement contains all of the, um, all of the various um, standards of development for the, for the property and uh, the buildings will uh, basically consist of either four or six attached dwelling units, uh, a maximum height of 35 feet. Uh, the max, it will have a minimum uh, lot area of 1,980 square feet. Minimum floor area of the townhomes shall be 1,600 square feet. The minimum lot width of the townhomes will be 22 feet. The, um, the developer was, is going to provide a three parking spaces per unit. Two spaces will be provided within the townhome unit garage. Uh, the, Lynn, if you could, could you pull up the other graphic? This is something that's special to this particular project. This is a graphic of the elevation of, I believe it's a six-unit building. Uh, the development agreement has special language that the townhomes will be constructed per this rendering. This rendering is Exhibit B of the development agreement. Uh, if the developer comes and decides to do a different, um, a different design, then the developer will be required to comply with the architectural standard, the townhome architectural standards at the time of development. That language is specifically stated within the development agreement. Uh, the staff has reviewed the amended and restated development agreement as well as the preliminary subdivision plan and recommends approval. The city attorney has also reviewed the documents and recommends approval. The local planning agency considered the resolution at its June 28th 2016 meeting and recommended approval with the condition that language of note number 29 on the title sheet of the preliminary subdivision plan be amended to match the language of the non-statutory development agreement of page 6, section 4. Uh, note 29 has been amended as recommended by the LPA. Uh, it's recommended that City Council adopt resolution number 3228-16. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Uh, I see the applicants present. Do you have anything to add? You have it easy tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. 
I have no request to speak forms. Anybody in the audience like to address council on resolution 3228-16? Seeing and hearing none, I will close the public comment portion and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 3228-16. Second. Motion second. Councilman Hankin, you have the floor. Uh, the only thing I want to say is, you know, the, the more and more since we have these new standards coming in, everybody's complying and making it a little bit easier. You know, it has all three you know, components we like to see, you know, the brick, the stone, the siding, you know, multiple things to, to dress it up nice. And, you know, we're just trying to make, make sure Oviedo doesn't become any town USA. And, Chad, you've been here. You kind of know what we're looking for. So, I mean, that picture, you know, spoke a thousand words. A lot of times, you know, I would tell developers, just bring us the picture. Sometimes you can just look at that and it just cuts right to the chase. So that, that looked fine. So especially in that area, you could use it. So that's good. Great. And the second was Deputy Mayor. Uh, I concur. I, I think, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be a nice uh, addition to the area. Um, it'll, I think, even be better than uh, what was originally thought of a few years back when we were looking at it. Uh, I think it'll add to the area. Thanks. Okay. Councilwoman? I have a couple questions. Um, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Cobb, maybe you can answer them. You said that it was originally zoned to have uh, two commercial buildings. Yes, ma'am. Why are they pulling those out? I think there would probably be a question for the applicants. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am, it is correct. The original design did have two commercial buildings that fronted on State Route 434. Tom McNamara, 400 King Quarter, Vito, Florida. The applicant for Central Park Town Homes. The market just didn't demand the office space. We tried marketing that for the last eight years. Granted, it was a downturn in the economy, but even when the economy came back, we tried working with They wound up living somewhere else to an existing building. So it's just market conditions and we're trying to sell the product. Um, the town home builders just wanted all town homes. They, didn't, they don't want to do things commercial. So that's the Even with all the building that's going on in Oviedo and the park, they weren't interested then? I'm no expert by any means in demand, but from a landowner, uh, residential demands there, but the commercial space just isn't. Okay. Uh, my second question is. Um, the the drawing that you have up there it looks as if it has in there you said that they are not required to follow our architectural standards that as we have them right here today correct and can just help me to understand that because I thought that it had expired and then they resubmitted so wouldn't the architectural standards come today with with today's standards that we have I don't think it ever expired mm -hmm. they they s submitted their application before it actually expired mm -hmm. and so with its history it was considered prior to the zoning in progress but I do know that the staff worked with their representatives to using the standards as the model and they got this graphic as close as they could get to the to the standards of the zoning in progress and so that was one of the things was that they worked very hard very diligently both sides worked very diligently on developing this this uh, design and so that's why there's the secondary language in there that if they do not use this design then they will comply with the with this townhome regulations because I was looking at the design and it looks as if and I I don't know all the percentages or anything like mm -hmm. that, but it almost looks like it fits in to our standards now. It is, it is very, very close. I, I've got to commend both staff and the applicant because they worked very hard together to put together a product that mm -hmm. is very reflective. There might be a few things, like I know uh, Dr. Correa, when we were talking about it, she said there may be a few percentages where we're off just a little bit, right. but they really work, work together to bring about a design that, that, reflect, that is reflective. Of the standards well, I think it's very nice and I think it's going to be a welcome addition to that area Central um, Avenue up there and make it beautiful because I walk by it every day <laughs> every day so let's make it beautiful that's it thank you great well I know we're talking 
Oh, I'm sorry, Keith. You're so quiet <laughs> down there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just a few other comments. I, I recall when this thing came through, when was it, 2008 originally? Yes, sir. And it was a, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of back and forth to uh, make this fit in with the surrounding residential areas. So first question is, are these going to be owner-occupied or are they going to be rental units? Yes, they'll be fee simple ownership owner Okay, that's that's good. That's not going to change. No, that's <laughs> and, and those of you sitting up here know why I'm asking that question because that's happened in the past and it's been a painful process. Um, other than the swap out for the commercial for the additional units, is the original uh, agreement intact from what we agreed on in 2008? Speaking to that meeting in 2008, the, the, which I said, the restrictions that were put in the DA um, regarding the neighborhoods, um, the, the neighbors that spoke, such as no lights on the second story, some of the setback concerns, the buffering, all that stays the same. Okay. Um, I'm more concerned with the buffering. Uh, I, I think truly, I saw something on the types of fences that are going to go in. Yeah. It's, it's a, there's actually more brick wall slash precast wall now than it was the first go around. Okay. I just want to make sure that what we agreed on back then isn't uh, being morphed into something else. So, okay. no. If anything, it's it's more stringent now with the architectural standards that are in there. Just to answer uh, Councilwoman Drago's question, it didn't expire, and technically now I can build 58 townhomes with no architectural standards. So rather than getting a protracted battle with the city staff, we resurrected these standards that I spoke about in December here, went through those as best we could, and came up with this rendering, and that's mm -hmm. where we're at today. So rather than fight it out. This is where we're at. As Brian spoke to the exact percentages, we can't say because these aren't scale drawings. And truthfully, your standards haven't been adopted either. They're still work in progress as well. So as the standards sit today, this matches them as, as best we can. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Anything else? No. Nope. No. Nope. Well, all I was going to say is that this one has been going on for a long time. And uh, we appreciate you acquiescing and following the new code. It probably made your life a lot easier. But uh, uh, that being said, is there anything else for the good of the order from the council, staff? Yes, sir. Applicant? No. Nope. Call the question. All in favor of the motion on the table to adopt resolution 3228-16. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on, we're up to resolution number 3229-16, amended site development order number 457-16 from Mike Roberto Way and City Walk Lane Road Improvements at Oviedo on the Park. Mr. Cobb? Uh, thank you. you. Uh, Lynn, if you could pull up the, the graphic for this one as well. Uh, Mayor, this is a request for this council to approve a, an amendment to site development under order number 457-16, which governs the uh, construction of Michael Roberto Way, the east extension of Michael Roberto Way, as well as the construction of City Walk Lane, which are two, uh, which are two dedicated public right of ways. Uh, City Council adopted resolution number 3150-16, uh, approving the strand replat, which uh, dedicated the rights of way to the city. Uh, the approved road improvements allow for the development of the continuation of Michael Berta Way as well as for the connection of the City Plaza Way, not City, City Walk Lane from Mitchell Hammock to uh, City Walk to uh, Center Lake Lane. Uh, the amendment addresses a uh, deviation request related to sidewalks uh, along Michael Berta Way and to front setbacks related to the sidewalks and the removal of two proposed uh, Parking lot islands. Uh, the, along the along Michael Berta Way, there is an area where uh, there were nine uh, parking spaces and two islands. And uh, what the proposal is is to remove the two islands and create them as parking spaces, so that we would have 11 parking spaces uh, within that area. The uh, staff has reviewed the requests. And uh, oh, there is one other request. The other request is on the very far east side of Mike Roberto Way uh, that currently it has to be constructed prior to the issuance of the first CO for the strand. And the applicant is asking that that very far east section of Mike Roberto Way, that that be 
allowed to wait, the finishing of it, be allowed to wait until the issuance of a certificate of occupancy to building number, I believe it's 3B, which is a building that is directly north. It's on the north side of Microberta Way, and it also fronts on the west side of Oviedo Boulevard. Now, the, as far as City Walk and the part of Microberta west of that, that would still be tied to the first CO for the Strand. However, this one section the applicant is requesting that we tie it to the building that is immediately adjacent to that part of the right-of-way. And the reason they're asking is that that is their primary construction entrance. And so while, they, it's, while construction is going on, uh, that, that roadway would not, uh, it would not be good to go ahead and put the finishing touches into that roadway until the construction has been completed. And so the applicant is requesting that we modify the conditions of approval of the site development order to make to accommodate that request. Uh, the applicant has reviewed the request and recommends adoption of resolution number 3229-16. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Does the applicant have anything to add? No? Okay. I have no request to speak forms, <clears throat> excuse me, on this item. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to address us on 3229-16? Seeing and hearing none, I will close public comments and move on to the pleasure of council. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Hankin. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 3229-16. Second. Motion second. Councilman Hankin, you have the floor. Nope. I have no questions. It's all good. Councilwoman? No, I think it looks great. Councilman Britton. Well, <laughs> no. Um, I'm reading the, the letter here from uh, Mr. Cavanaugh to... Mr. Yergain on, on the rationale for it. It's a little bit hard to understand the rationale, but I, I suspect it's to, uh, if I can summarize this, it's to allow construction traffic on, on uh, Microberta Way uh, and keep the vehicular traffic off of it until such time as that the construction traffic has gone away. Is that pretty much it? Okay. It, uh, it makes sense to do it that way. I was a little bit concerned that we we did talk about this uh, a while back that we wanted all of that infrastructure in before we uh, started issuing the uh, COs, but uh, this seems to have a, a fairly good rationale for it. So let's go do it. Okay, Deputy Mayor, uh, we're just talking that last leg coming in. Yes, That's sir. Going to be right. Everything else will be. Everything else. Will yeah, they'll be that, you know because that way. There'll be exit points for uh, people utilizing the stores, Starbucks, et cetera, as it comes up. Um, and as things start coming up, they'll have the ways to get out to Oviedo Boulevard by heading back down. So I, I don't see a problem. Okay. Anything else? No? Just, just complete microberto way, please. <laughs> please. All righty. Uh, hearing nothing else, Mr. Cobb, anything? No, Mayor. No. Nope. Council, anything? Applicant? No. Nope. Good. Call the question. Uh, all in favor of the motion on the table to adopt ordinance number 3229-16, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Moving on. Discussion items. We have none this evening. Mr. Cobb, we're up to your report. Mayor, I just want to thank the Council for uh, your participation in the development of this year's budget. Also, you can see that list of people there hanging on the wall. I want to say a special thank you to them and special recognition uh, from me. They worked extremely hard this year, and uh, uh, it, we had a special exercise this year on my whiteboard, as we normally do each year. Uh, we narrowed it down that all of this we were able to do with 9% of the budget. And that's what we really, when we sat down and really started looking at all the different things that um, we had control over, we found out we have control over 9%, and we were able to do a lot with that 9%. So I want to I acknowledge them and tell them my, my sincere thanks, and also thank you for your help in putting it together. Uh, it gets, even like I said, it was, bigger, it was a bigger challenge this year, but it gets better. Every year it seems to get better. So thank you. Our pleasure, Brian. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. Mr. Groot, you're up. I am going to pass this evening, Mr. Mayor, Members of Council. I have nothing to report. All righty. Uh, Council Member Hankin, you're up, Steve. Um, just a quick thing. Brian, I'm, I'm glad now that you finally have um, your assistant city manager position funded and you don't have to roll the boat by yourself anymore. So uh, 
you know, so hopefully that'll uh, that'll work out good for you, um, <laughs> and uh, you'll make that appointment soon. So just wanted to pick that out. We've been trying to fund that for a while, so it is quite a, quite amazing. So good job, Brian. That's all I had. Councilwoman, you're up. Actually, I have no report tonight. All righty. Councilman Britton. I can't believe you guys didn't pick up uh, <laughs> just a couple questions, or quite a couple comments. One is uh, someone, the mayor, was pleased to announce that uh, Center Lake Park received the 2016 Award of Merit from the Florida American Society of Landscape Architects. So that was congratulations, nice. Drew. That goes to you. Good job. And then I also see something in here that we were the uh, sixth safest city in Florida. Yep. So <laughs> Chief Chudnow. Congratulations, good job, and, and I read your, uh, uh, what is that, a monthly report or a quarterly report you send out? Monthly, monthly report, uh, our crime rate is scary low, and uh, just keep it that way, yeah. <laughs> uh, it just, it's phenomenal how, uh, how well a job you guys are doing, so keep it up, and uh, we'll go from there. And the only other thing I have is I will not be here on August 1st, I'm going to be at a conference in Washington, so just announcing that I'll be absent that night. Okay, the three of you <laughs> did not have a <laughs> party. Just the three of us. <laughs> Might not be you. That is, nobody could be sick that night. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> that is scary. <laughs> We're leaving three just the three of you. <laughs> three of them. Mm. That's going to be that's going to be good. Yeah. Hey, can I just before you turn? It no, up, I'm really yeah. seriously considering changing my vacation plans, <laughs> knowing that flying back from the oh. Baltics. <laughs> can I just uh, add one thing on to Keith, uh, Chief? What am I working? There we go, Chief Judd. Now, now I was going to say, um, you know, Britain uh, just talked about how low the crime rate is, and I just wanted to, in case anybody didn't catch it. We are going to put in the hands of the voters, and what I always say when we give it to the masses, they get it right. To finally. Um, get you guys a new home, which you desperately need. Um, so I, I know that once our residents see the plans and we give them the education like they did with the fire station, you guys will have that and then, you know, you won't have to live in those conditions anymore. But uh, it is a testament being there and being in those facilities, the job you're doing. So, but it, it, the relief is coming. Yes. What, 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 what's wrong with the building they're in? <laughs> <laughs> so it's 26 years old and there's 12 detectives in one 10 by 10 room. It works. Uh, anyway, Councilman Britton, it was your okay. report and we hijacked it. Are you good? All righty. Uh, myself real quick, uh, Drew, you, got a, uh, you did an incredible job at 4th of July. I don't, I don't think we've met since, you, uh, since the event. The uh, fireworks vendor this year, whoever it was, I mean, nothing but compliments from all the residents on the uh, quality of the show that that band what was their, their names rocket or something uh, those guys were uh, also very good so uh, great job by you your staff everybody was out there in that heat all afternoon uh, to put on just another incredible fourth of july event also drew now i'll stay on you you've got your i4 comedy tour coming up friday night uh, anybody who hasn't been to it the first one when we were there it was great so it's a fun event seven o'clock doors open over here at the amphitheater it is indoors it's not outdoors so you'll be in the air conditioning and uh, the comedians were a lot of fun last time everybody enjoyed themselves the uh, Vito Winter Springs Chamber of Commerce had their hobnob uh, about a month ago again we haven't met in a while it was well attended as usual they put on a great event and you know chief for just we're going to harp on your crime rate numbers for, for a second. You know, when you, when you look at the crime rate and you look at the crime rate per capita of Oviedo today compared to 30 years ago, it's actually lower today. And, and the, the phenomenon with social media, you know, people seem to think that we have this unbelievable crime rate and as we have growth, we have more crime. Nothing could be further from the truth. The crime rate per capita keeps going down each year, which means your crime rate is actually going down. Yes, there are, there, there's more crimes if you look at the number, but when you look at the overall number and how it's measured, it's lower. So that is just a great job by all the men and women over the department. 
And, you know, as I said, with social media, as soon as something happens anywhere, it's all over the place, and people just assume, you know, crime is out of control and nothing could be further from the truth. So, great job. Uh, that's the end of my report, Deputy Mayor Schenck. If I could ask, uh, Council, uh, Brian and I were talking the other day, and we were mentioning, uh, and Drew was in there, about uh, uh, committees, and we were talking about the Parks and Rec Committee and ION. Uh, I'd just like to, if we can grab a discussion up, kind of redirect possibly give those guys that's a great discussion to have on August 1st <laughs> <laughs> we do like to do that when we're all back in town yes yeah, I'm proud of you all I know you know Keith's involved in both of those so I definitely <laughs> like to see him involved and, and in town in both of those um, but it just again giving them a little direction seeing uh, the effectiveness uh, not of I on I has been very effective but like kind of I know Ben had been at, you know, what, what's the next step, where, where do they go, and, and let's help, help them understand, or just us understand, where to next, um, the largest of that program, and again, Parks and Rec, just maybe re-delving into them, but just have a discussion about that, at, at, you know, in the future. We can do that. I've been trying to figure out uh, how to maybe reconfigure the Parks and Rec yeah. committee and get some more of the representation. Uh, some of those guys have been out there, but some of them are still active in yeah. the programs. ION's uh, doing well, and as you know, both of those committees, because we formed them, uh, we were able to qualify for a lot of grant oh, yeah. uh, money that... Yeah, it's, it's not a matter of getting, getting rid of it. It's, you know, like any, you know, girl, uh, they've, they've done some great things now. It's a matter of just reshaping them, directing them, and, and seeing what they feel is a good thing, and kind of, you know, hearing from you, hey, where, do, where and Drew, and how can we reshape it a little bit possibly to get to be... Uh, as effective as it was in the beginning. Good time to do that. You know, that kind of thing. That's all. That's it. Mr. Cobb, maybe September would be a good time for that. Yeah, that way I'll we'll have everybody okay. present. All righty. Anything else for the good of the order from council? Good. Staff? Mr. Thank Cobb, you. anything? All righty. Future meeting dates. We have Monday, August 1st, 2016, 6.30 p.m. Um, then we have Monday, August 15th, 2016, 6.30 p.m. Both are regular sessions here in the council chambers. Monday, August 29th, uh, 5.30 p.m. is a budget work session. With that being said, our meeting is adjourned. It is 10 of 8. Remember, lift up your head.